Hey, welcome back YouTubers. Um, <clears throat> we have a new project for our 2004 Nissan Armada. Um, hopefully we'll be successful. So essentially, um, we received our emissions notice. So uh, we're gonna have to go take it in shortly. Um, one thing to notice is when the vehicle is running, it's currently off, but when it's running, this uh, service engine light remains on. If I reset it, it comes back on. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at uh, what the code is, which I already know, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you. So there is our port underneath the dash here. We're gonna hook in a, uh, a reader. So this is our OBD for onboard diagnostics. And we are just gonna connect this guy up down here and uh, get a reading. See if I can do it. There we go. So we connect it in. We hook it into our PC. And then we run an application. Um, there's lots of them out there. I'm running this one, which is free. So we go to our check engine. We can get the engine data. And it will indicate we have a code. So a little bit of light in here, but essentially it's the ominous P0455. So uh, this is an emissions related code indicating a gross uh, leak is detected. So uh, there's a lot of information online, particularly for Nissans. I guess it's a known issue, um, at least with some of their other models like the Frontier and Ultima and things of that nature. Um, so, uh, essentially what they're saying online, and there is a, a bulletin, you could find a Nissan bulletin, I'll, I'll try to link to it as well, um, that talks about this. Um, but essentially, there is a canister with charcoal in it to uh, essentially absorb some of the fuel vapors. And um, that could be one of the items that is having an issue. Um, there's essentially this valve that uh, gets stuck and um, basically is stuck open, so vapors are constantly escaping. So <clears throat> this is the older version of the valve. Uh, Nissan actually has an updated part for it. Um, this it was much cheaper to purchase online. The Nissan part is like 115 bucks, I believe. This is... 30, 40 bucks. Um, so we're going to give this a try. There's also uh, Chinese knockoff versions, which hopefully this isn't one of those that I paid extra for, but you could get the uh, ones that are being produced out of China for about 20 bucks. Um, I've had some issues with some parts uh, coming from China, so I'm going to uh, pay a little bit more and hopefully that works for me. Let me go ahead and show you for the first task of this canister filter. This may be a pain in the butt because the canister is not really accessible for us. So this is uh, some of the service manual information. Let me read the line here. Sorry for the shakiness. We'll try it like this, okay. So essentially, uh, this is the canister, what it looks like. And we can see there's our valve that we want to replace. Um, sometimes this canister exists in the quarter panel in the back by the bumper on the rear side of the vehicle. However, for our vehicle, this is where it's indicating it is. Underneath the vehicle with the fuel tank removed. So... Potentially the fuel tank is in the way and we may need to remove the fuel tank to get to it. The process to remove the fuel tank is partially tearing out the interior of the vehicle in order to loosen certain bolts or nuts that are above the fuel tank to allow it to be removed. So uh, potentially this is a big job if we are unable to access that canister valve from underneath and reach around the tank to do it. So 
All right, wish us luck, and uh, we're going to explore if we could do this without removing the fuel tank. Okay, guys, we're underneath the vehicle. Essentially, uh, the camera is facing the front of the vehicle, so you can see that our uh, fuel tank is right here. And we got our drive shaft up here. Um, this is the passenger side. Um, over here is the passenger side. This is the driver side. So again, we're facing the front of the vehicle. And um, if we come up here, we can see uh, uh, there's really no gap um, above the fuel tank here. So we're going to work our way back here towards the uh, uh, axle and the differential. So we're, we're coming up here. And essentially, here's our differential that the drive shaft's connected to. And if we look straight up here, it looks like this is the canister. So this is the uh, charcoal canister. And we can visually inspect the rear of the canister over here. So this is the rear of the canister. Um, it would have been great if uh, the connections were here because there's a lot of room to do stuff here. But it is not. So we're going to move over to the front of the canister. Or attempt to at least. Let's see if I can even get the camera up here. Uh, so it's a bit of a stretch to get my arm over here, but uh, essentially this is the front of the canister. And I'm so close to it right now that it's hard to see, but uh, I don't know if I can get my arm anywhere near. Let's try something else. But the way I'm holding the camera, I can't see what I'm doing. But essentially, that is the module there that we're going to remove. So it does appear I could do it without removing the fuel tank, which I am so excited about. Um, we don't know for sure if... Uh, this will fix our problem, but it is uh, the likely culprit second to a gas cap. So uh, the first inexpensive thing we could purchase is a gas cap, and uh, but more than likely uh, people indicate that that doesn't necessarily work for them, that it is this vent that uh, is the issue. So uh, we're going to go ahead and try to remove this vent. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to have the camera positioned anywhere where you could see what I'm doing. So um, I'm going to go ahead and, and see if I can remove it. It essentially is going to twist to be removed. It t twists in and twists out, uh, uh, probably a little bit less than a 45 degree angle to get it in and out. So we need to remove uh, the connector at the top and the tube at the bottom, and then it twists out, and we'll go ahead and remove that and bring it down for you guys. So let me go ahead and start working on it, and we'll come back. All right, guys, I was able to twist it. Essentially, I'm twisting it this way, and then it pops out. So I have it popped out, but now I have to work off the hose as well as the connector so i'm going to be working on that next and then we'll have it removed completely and we'll insert the new one all right we're making progress um very difficult to do because uh when you're on the ground you only really have one hand that you can get back there at one time because of everything that's in the way um, but once you're able to disconnect that uh, connector um, essentially Way over here at the edge of the connector, there's a little button you press in that lifts up and then you're able to wiggle it out. Um, so now with the hose, I'm able to pull it a lot closer to me. I can use two hands now and I can uh, remove this uh, hose to put the new one in. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that next. Okay, so we have the old one out. I'm going to go ahead and inspect it a little bit here. Let's see if we can uh, get a little focus on the inside. So essentially, looking at it, it looks like there may be a bit of uh, dirt and stuff in there. That the seal isn't all the way closed, whereas in this one it looks like the seal is all the way closed. So it looks like there may be an obstruction inside this. 
So in the service manual, in order to test it, it indicates if you apply positive voltage to one terminal and negative to the other terminal, 12 volts from the battery, um, you'll be able to hear a click. And if you hear the click, it, it indicates this is working. But even though it may be working, you may have a, a valve stuck. Like this one appears that it probably is stuck. So I'm hoping this fixes our issue. So we're going to go ahead and install the new one now. Okay, so we're going to follow the reverse procedure uh, to install the new one. So essentially we're going to hook up our hose first. And I've kind of... Uh, uh, it's, you can see there's a bit of cracking and stuff happening. So eventually I'll probably have to replace this hose. But... Uh, We'll see what we end up with here. There's no cracks on the outside, and the other one seemed like a pretty tight fit. So um, we're going to go ahead and install this. Again, I'm doing this one-handed, so it's going to be a little bit challenging. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, I'm gonna have to do this, uh, put the camera down to do it. So once I get this hose in, I'm gonna twist this around and reconnect it with our uh, cable up there. So once we have that in there, we're then gonna hold it at a 45 degree angle and uh, reinsert it into uh, the connection and uh, twist it to tighten it. One thing to note is you need to make sure that this gasket was removed from the previous uh, fitting and it's not stuck in there. So holding the previous uh, one, I can see that that came off with it. So we're good. So we're going to get a good seal. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, continue with the reinstallation. All right, guys, it was uh, quite the undertaking to get this thing back on there because there's a very difficult uh, spacing back here as far as movement and to get your hands up there. So if this was on a lift, it would probably be a bit more easy. Um, but nonetheless, I took the hose and the electrical connection off and on its own, I was able to finally get it back on maybe about 15 minutes of, uh, of having to mess with it. Once it was on, then I was able to reconnect the electrical on the top and the hose on the bottom. So essentially, we're good to go uh, for this uh, particular uh, replacement. Okay, guys, we're back, uh, and we're uh, hooked up to the onboard diagnostics. We're going to go ahead and reset this code. Okay, so one uh, method... To reset the code is to just disconnect the battery for a period of time, five to ten minutes, and that would do it. But if you have one of these uh, ODB, OB, eh, onboard diagnostics OBD uh, connectors, essentially we can uh, come back to this application here, or whatever application you have, and we can choose to just clear the code. Okay. So essentially we chose to clear. Okay, no codes. Come back over here. We can see that our uh, engine light went off. However, um, the computer is going to continue to collect data. So um, we should drive test to see if the, if the light comes back on because potentially if there's another contributing factor causing the leak in the uh, evaporation system, uh, that light will come back on. So uh, we're going to monitor this and see if this was the fix. If it is, we'll come back and announce it. Um, otherwise, uh, we're going to have to move on to s step two to figure out what to do next. So um, I'll come back here uh, once we do a drive test. Okay, good news. So we've been driving around for about a day. And uh, our light is still clear. So it appears uh, the valve was the issue. 
and uh, we were able to replace it. It took probably about a half hour. It's a little bit uh, difficult uh, to get uh, um, your hands back there, but uh, once you're able to work through it, um, it was a successful job. So hopefully this helps you if you have the same code, the P0455 for the gross evap leak detected. Um, and it'll save you some money. Um, good luck.